Oh, you're right. Well, Monthly meeting of the stormwater committee to order, Wednesday, July 20th, 2022. It looks like it's 107. Uh, this is a public meeting being video and audio recorded for cable broadcast and internet posting on www.dighton-ma.gov and YouTube. I just want to mention that the legislation that would have ended uh, remote participation got extended. It was actually expired um, on the 15th, but the uh, state legislature did extend it. So um, it can still be uh, these types of meetings. Do we know if anyone's calling in? You haven't heard from anybody? No, no nobody knows. It's just being recorded. We're okay, not, um... that's fine. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Patavia. Mr. Uh, Mr. Berry. Berry, how are you um, Since you have to leave, and since we have um, some uh, guests here today, uh, I'll entertain a motion to take uh, items out of order. Does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, what, which one do you want to take? Uh, Dr. Bart, are you here for? Uh, <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Is there a second to take 3D out of order? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Are we all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, who wants to start the discussion on this? Which, which one is this now? The, yeah, we're not the 2371 down the street. No, just the, the section itself. Yeah. Um, At the last meeting, I asked you all to consider what solutions to the bought property um, and then to present them today. Um, so after we finished our site visits and also after some of us attended the uh, visit 2371 when there was somebody there from the DEP, um, it was decided we should prioritize uh, in order of the least amount of work that's going to be required so that we can notify the property owner of what is next. So, um, based on that and based on the sites we visited, uh, I opened this up for discussion. Which one should we take first as far as needing the least amount of cleanup? Probably the easiest to deal with at this point. Right, we dealt with. It wasn't the status. Yeah. Um, well, so, is not yet. Because twenty three ninety three. Twenty three ninety three. Yep. So at uh, twenty three ninety three County Street, when we went there, what we saw was. Correct me if I leave anything out or if I'm wrong. Um, the railroad bed was not full, filled up so that it blocked the flow of water. However, it did contain uh, organic matter like grass clippings and brush and tree stumps, whatever. Uh, the items of concern were what resembled um, household or construction debris <clears throat> in the form of 
broken windows, window frames, and glass. So, um, we need to send a letter to that property owner telling them what has to be done um, and that he can no longer dump organic matter into the railroad bed. If he's going to compost, he's going to do it out of sight away from the edge of the railroad bed. Uh, so, discussion, comments from anybody? Well, I think this property is going to pretty much fall in the same category for me is that anything that's not yard waste type stuff needs to be removed and stop dumping from there in the future. Uh, to me, it's anything that didn't belong in there with all construction debris or contaminated uh, fill, that's the right word for it. Um, that's the kind of stuff I would rather see taken off. But I'm okay with you again staying in there as long as the stream can still flow. We just don't want more in here. Right. Not because. Right. But stop from dumping anymore. Um, so, so then uh, obviously that, that will be in a letter to the property owner. Um, specifically remove the material that is not yard waste. Would that sum it up? Because if it's not grass or uh, brush clippings or hedge tripping or whatever, that kind of stuff is. Uh, certainly the wood in this glass and the frames from the window, those have got to go. So all of that was visible. Does he have to dig down or is he got to remove everything that's visible? I don't think- I don't think it was much in there. Yeah, I don't think he wanted to dig down. That is I don't know how stable that bank would be. Yeah, and that could just lead to a slippery slope of stuff sliding down more and all the rest yep. of it. So I don't see the need for excavation out of it. It's just like a need for coffee to be removed. Um, that's just my opinion. I agree. So then the letter should indicate what kind of a timeline are we talking about? He doesn't need a plan drawn or anything because it's not. I would say that winter. You've got to have the stuff in fall. Or... Yeah, before that, because if there's anything not in compliance, you need some time to correct it. So. How about October the 1st? Because after October the 1st, you never know when it's going to snow and you're not going to be able to inspect it. And by the same time, you can inspect it and it snows, it's not going to be able to get it out of there. So that's effectively like 70 days to do work, right? So that's all. August and September. So I think that would be reasonable. If they need more time, they can just ask. Okay. And um, once we, we want them to notify us that the stuff is gone or to apply for an extension, and then we will inspect it one more time. Something like that. Okay, so is there a motion to um, notify the owner of 2393 County Street uh, of the action we've taken today? And I will spell that out in detail in the letter. I make a motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing on all in favor? Aye. 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 unanimous. Um, do we have anything to report uh, on? Okay, so we said we were going to prioritize them. So of the sites we visited, what is the next site that we would have to be communicating to the property owner on? Exactly. Dr. Vaught? Yeah, he said he Okay, so um, <clears throat> does he need a... <laughs> Drawn to clean up. Well, I think he's very similar. It's just larger quantities. Would that be the, compared to the one we just talked about? It's mostly organic, no? It is, but I'm saying it's just bigger quantities. I think what the other one said. There might have been a couple things that didn't belong in there, but I would think, I would, as far as I'm concerned, the order would be the same type thing. It's anything that doesn't belong, pull it out and stop putting anything else in there. 
Well, I'm talking like construction debris. That's what I'm referring to. But I don't think there was any. But I think the order should be the same as the other person. I don't think they should be taking that on the job. But that's just me. I think that way we're consistent. That's what's, the, what's the street address? 70 Pleasant. I believe that one would require some location controls or something too. Okay. So is what is what we are talking about. Uh, since the property owner is sitting here, and I'm sure he's got questions. What we're talking about is he would be notified that he has to remove the items that are uh, non-organic, debris-type stuff. Um, what are you talking about as far as now when he removes that, you're talking siltation control. What else does he have to do? I didn't know what the solar committee was going to consider requiring him to remove the dirt that, that had been placed on there. Does any of the, of Kermit, what I remember here, there was water that was pooled, but I think the pooling was caused from filling further up. I mean, it was a narrow channel, I, I admit to that. I mean, if, if we're going to ask him to clean it up, other than taking out non-organic debris, Got to give them an idea of what you're talking about. Because I know there's other properties that have dirt on the, that's been there for a long time. So mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. it's a matter of being very specific on what we dirt we're referring to for removal. How about if we send a letter about cleaning out the uh, non-organic debris and reinspecting it? and see what it looks like so that then we can determine whether or not any soil has to be moved or whatever. I mean, obviously we can inspect while they're doing the work and all that. Yeah, just, just so that he has some idea what we're talking about here. Yeah. Dr. Bob, do you wish to speak? Have questions? I think the biggest question is, and it came up for an insight visit is, what I heard was is getting keeping the water flowing. Um, and so if I'm hearing you correctly, it's the, currently the channel gets blocked uh, with organic matter slash dirt. And as long as there is a way for all that water to flow naturally as it naturally would, that's that's the that, that would be the inspection. That's the way I see it. <clears throat> uh, yes, yeah, that's the goal. I, However, his spot before he bought the property, someone had built earth in the bed. If he has one in narrow spots, I don't know. That's going to move it up. Well, so I guess there's two separate plants. So one would be to remove all of the dirt that was put in by the data center. The other would be to have a, some sort of engineered uh, culvert put in, um, both of which I'm assuming have a substantial cost associated with. I don't think we're going that far yeah. at this point in time. It's open more. So my question is, we all agree that, that non-organic matter has to be removed. Question is, the channel has narrowed, as Mr. Ferry pointed out. So we've got to give them an indication of how much soil should be removed if it needs to be removed. Knowing that whatever we tell him, the other side's going to fall into the same category. Well, one of them really needs, we said, already required an engineering plan. Right, but that was that's a different type of debris that's been placed in, which is why they're a little, they're, they're falling into Are you talking with the property to the north? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, that's the other side of the railroad bed. Yeah. But that's a whole other different. No, no, I understand that, but I'm, that's what I'm saying. Get them very specific in what we're asking for. Exactly. And that's why I'm saying if we do this in steps, in other words, <clears> the one that needs the least attention, we're going to do first. It appears that the next property that needs, yes, it needs cleanup, but it needs, again, a lesser amount than the worst property. I'll put it that way. So, 
how do you want to do this so that if the, the non-organic matter is removed and you see what's left. And I don't know if in the course of moving any of that, it's going to cause a disturbance that's going to make you have to remove soil anyhow. So the question is, would you want to inspect it when we know that the first attempt to remove that debris is going to be done? Yeah, I would think we need to be there while we're doing it. But at some point, we got to decide how wide of a channel we want to maintain here. Because, you know, it's only this wide is it doing its job, or do we need it three feet wide? We can't, we can't have this problem happen again. So, um, from a CONCOM standpoint, you got anything to add? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I agree with Todd. I, I feel like it's probably we have to determine the width that we'd like. Um, I think we need, we may need a survey. Can it be done, as I said to begin with, can it be done in two steps? The first thing is get the, get the debris out of there that doesn't belong there, the non-organic stuff. We know that when the house was built, somebody did filling back there. The question is how much has to be removed because the, I'll call it the channel, the rail of the bed is narrowed, right? In the course of removing the stuff that's gotta go, there could be, uh, a disturbance that would indicate or give you a clue how much more needs to be removed or once that is removed, uh, removing some of that may in effect uh, widen the area anyhow because it's, there's dirt and everything else in there. So I'm asking, can this be done in a two-step process? The problem is we can do it as many steps as we want as long as we're taking steps to go in the right direction. Okay, um, Dr. Bullock? Questions. We're not talking about a drain pipe. We're not talking about a culvert. We're talking about opening up the railroad bed, um, widening it uh, closer to its original state. And I'm not saying we're opening it up so a train could go through there, uh, just to further uh, help with the flow of water. Uh, Mr. Berry, comments? Uh, I'll say that one. The minor prior, the rest is just organics and, and some of the minor. The then more on the slope is, is earth. I mean, here, the earth went actually on the bed towards, I mean, more than halfway, roughly halfway. So it's a little different. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to consider each one separate. I know that. And so, what I'm saying in this particular case, if the first work that we asked to have done is remove the debris, the non, the non-organic material, okay? And then take a look at it and figure out how much earth, soil should be removed. By the way, when you remove the soil, what, can, you, can you put it elsewhere on the property? Okay. okay. All right. The other thing too is what you don't know, what we don't know is, so there, we, we remove the stuff that everyone agrees is gonna go. We don't know what's underneath what was filled. All right, hopefully we're not gonna find any other stuff, but um, it would appear that at least two steps should be considered. And if something else turns up, then we gotta say, okay, this is what happened. And we've gotta consider this now. Um, does that work for you? So I guess the last question would be, I heard it done under supervision. So it's, once I, I'm responsible for finding a contractor and then notifying that the work should be done on certain Yep, and then we'll come down at some point during the day, any one of us or more than one of us and go in and take a look at it. Because we don't want you to stop and have to wait for us. So you, you want you to keep going. And say, I think out of the four of us, or five or six of us, whatever, somebody will be doing that part. So, that <clears throat> cause a problem. I don't think I'd get in trouble though, because you work in the weather. Okay. That's your question. And we all know the answer is yes. Is that right? Right. 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 Right.
Yeah, so, so we've been talking about this for a long time. I'm glad that we're having to make progress completely. But what are we really after? Are we after getting rid of the stuff that's in there, potentially contaminating the wetland and opening the waterway back right. up? And I'm not going to ask for notice of intent. Right. So I think I think it's a good Arresting. question. But I think we need to work cohesively with these, especially when there's multiple property owners involved. If we're making progress, we need to take all the roadblocks out of the way that we can without harming anything or anyone, any environment, and just get this done. So, so that's a good question. We, we can do that. Well, yes, but with, without filing a notice of intent, would be Could we consider maintaining the main structure? There you go. Thank you. Okay. But, so then it would just require a notice. Yeah, notification to conservation that they're working. So when somebody calls the conservation commission, they have notice. Which would, which would be done when we have to So just like when the DPW cleans out ditches, they don't have to file for every one. They could say, hey, cleaning ditches. So I think that I think that's I think that's reasonable. And I think it would be reasonable for at least them to come to the conservation commission and say this is what I'm going to do. Just okay. not a hearing, but just. This is my informal informal discuss under discussion. Right, well, that's going to be on the agenda. Let me know because I want to be there. All right. So getting back to the, the I've got to prepare a letter to Dr. Boyd. I'm going to ask him to clean up the non-organic materials, uh, and that will be uh, the work will be inspected. As a matter of fact, before I even list the conditions, I'm going to state that this is a maintenance of the uh, town drainage system or the natural drainage system. What's the word, Mrs. Perry? Well, it's not so maintenance of the drainage system or ditch? Pick a word. The letter I referred to Previously is going to state this also. Every letter will state this as maintenance of a drainage ditch. That's why this action is being taken. Okay, so um, the letter is going to say that he has to clean up the uh, non organic materials. It will be inspected by uh, members or a member of the stormwater committee. Um, and then uh, Removal of soil will be determined at that after the cleanup of non-organic materials. Does that make sense? Somebody? Why are you looking at me? Um, I'm sorry, I have cleanup of non-organic materials inspected by the committee. What was the last? The question is removal of uh, soil Thank will you. be determined at the time of inspection. Next question. Yeah, because it's, it's multi-layered, right? We, we want to remove the uh, non-organics and we want to make sure that the water flows. So that's going to have to be determined on the site in the absence of the survey. I'm not really in favor of the survey. I think it's going to add costs to this that are different for every property owner. And they may not all hire the same survey. So Some of them may require, you know, 2371 definitely requires the well, survey. But that's a different circumstance. So, okay. I just thought yeah. we were writing a letter that would go out to each one of them. Uh, yeah. Only the part about its maintenance of a drainage okay. ditch. Uh, after that, uh, it just so happens the first letter. Uh, well, is very similar to this one as far as cleaning it up. Um, uh, he doesn't have um, fill into the thing, we, you know, but we know that when the house was built on Pleasant Street, uh, the person who built the house filled in back there, okay? And then it got some uh, debris put in there that doesn't belong there. So, um, So Arise, it's cleanup of the non-organic materials and removal of soil will be determined at the time of inspection. Okay. Which means if in fact 
a little bit needs to be removed, it can be done right then and there. If by any chance they dig up a nightmare, it's like, it's a nightmare. But anyhow, it would at that point in time, the property owner would know what is going to be done if further work needs to be done. All right. And if uh, with the person doing the cleanup there, it probably will, uh, will have the equipment that if they have to take a couple of scoops out of there or whatever they have to do and put it somewhere else on the property, it'll all be there. But that'll be determined by the committee's inspection. Whoever goes out to inspect the property. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Do you have any questions? Do you understand why we're doing this in a two step thing? We're trying to keep costs to a minimum, but we know the problem has to be resolved. Um, so when you, um, the only thing I would add in the discussion, I can verify that I believe if inorganic items are, are no longer, or even when you came out for the initial site visit, I think it is all at this point dirt and fill. And so if I'm hearing you correctly, the expectation would be to have someone come out there and discuss the channel under the inspection of someone who's great. And, and then if, if they found something in there that didn't belong, it has to come. That's why it's in the letter, even though from the surface we can't see anything. We need to make sure that if you encounter something that doesn't belong, uh, and obviously the main thing is to get the water flowing because of mosquitoes. Um, I know even though it's been a drought and everything else, and it's still there. Okay, uh, is there any other discussion or any questions or comments that anyone has that they wish to make? Okay, um, we'll get this letter out to you and then you can show it to whoever you're going to have do this work. And uh, if he has any questions, uh, get back to any of the stormwater committee members. Tom Ferry, uh, Highway Superintendent, um, Water Help, uh, Stormwater Agent Jim, they're always around. Um, and <clears throat> if the uh, contractor says, I think the only thing we have to do is widen this about this much, then you should get that message back to the town before you start doing it. And you may want to get a couple of different quotes, whatever, but at least get a ballpark idea what we're talking, what you're talking about, what we're talking about, about costs. Um, but that's me. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to send a letter to uh, Dr. Vaught outlining the discussion we just had? A second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Hi. Okay. I'm still, I gotta leave, but as soon as I get in my truck, I'm gonna switch to the phone. So it's already on the screen, so I'll be joining in audio. I'll probably do a test audio. Okay. Um, just, just a quick one. Are there any other topics here we should take ahead of time? If not, uh, we'll go back to the uh, format of the agenda. Um, agenda item 3A. Review, discuss, act, Hunter Hill stormwater application. Good. Well, that's kind of awkward. Can I, can, that, um, can that be turned to, oh, well, if you read the email, sorry, right. Right.
Some water permits where it says other on this particular one. I would suggest you check the box other and put in infiltration because that's really what we promote, not recapture and detention. And everybody uses these terms interchangeably. They're not very, they're defined in our bylaw exactly what we mean by those kinds of um, places. So um, I would make a note that this leads under us to be checked. Okay, if you just state your name for the record so that uh, Mrs. Grassy has it, please. Thank you. Senator Watson of W Engineering. Um, You're on. Very good. It's my understanding that this is not an actual public hearing, but I appreciate the time uh, that the board gave me to be on the agenda. Uh, we did not have the opportunity to advertise, I think, in time or whatnot. So, um, our mission tonight is to bring the board up to speed about what we're doing. Uh, speaking with Todd, he was hoping that uh, we could schedule a sidewalk. And then I was. Uh, Hoping to talk to Todd a little bit about maybe getting out there and doing some test pits in our proposed solar uh, locations. So um, it is the Hunters Hill project. Um, we have been going at this for some time, but we finally come to the point where we have um, essentially finalized our design. Uh, we're submitted as a modification to an existing approval, which is an open space residential community. Um, we have filed for with the planning board and conservation and, and this board as well. So everybody has the same set of plans. Everybody has the same set of calculations. Everybody has the same set of reports. So everybody's looking at the same thing, which is, which is good. Um, the planning board asked that their review engineer, uh, Shaheen Shaheen from Green Environmental Project and the uh, Conservation Commission has with niche engineering to review uh, stormwater and the uh, stormwater standards uh, on that side. Um, we did meet with the planning board. We had a very favorable uh, meeting. Both the, pl the planning board uh, really liked our uh, modification to the plan, and we had uh, quite a bit of public input. And they were, uh, we had a very positive meeting there where um, essentially the, the board was in favor of things and they were interested in seeing what the uh, output from the engineers review was going to be. Are they going to have a public hearing? There has been a public hearing. Okay. So, again, it's for a uh, Form C modification. It's a major modification. So we require a public hearing and board is notified and it's out of time. Okay. So I can go over the plan briefly. Again, do not public hearing and not having uh, engineering review done just yet. I think it's appropriate just to show everybody what we're looking to do. So I'll start with the plan was approved back in 2004, so you can see it was 140 lots um, on, I don't know, I don't have total acreage here, but it's close to 300 acres plus or minus. It's an open space subdivision. So what that means is that a certain portion of the site needs to be set aside for open space, and that um, the subdivision is essentially clustered into areas uh, central to reduce that infrastructure and pervious area and all that type of thing for preserve open space. Um, the amount of open space on this project is three times the required amount. So, all in all, the uh, amount of land that's being preserved of those 140 lots is it's incredible. Um, there's quite a lot. You can see it goes all the way from um, William Street on the side of the plan all the way almost out to um, 
the only electric easement is this. Well, the name of the street over here, right? It's almost. Which part of the street? Hot Street is to the north, right? Which goes yes. to west. Yeah, it's going to be just to the south of that soil field on Stone Street. Yeah, the soil fields over here. So, so we're all the way away from that. So again, this was the approved plan um, back 2004, probably before this board was created. Um, it had one, two, three, four retention basins, and it had one uh, water quality device that discharged into the wetland. Here. Um, and as such, a portion of this site was constructed. Uh, they were allowed to do 34 homes on a Title V compliant septic system, shared site. Well, here, probably part of the reason why it hasn't been developed until this time was the soils are very poor, what you call C and D soil. Um, there was no suitable soil on this entire site for. So it's designed as a community septic system. Uh, right now, it can accept the 34 homes in the back, and I believe they have 34, uh, 33 plus the sales uh, office are all tied into that septic system. On that plan, yes. What is actually built up there right now? Sure. That's a good question. This is mostly terrible. I guess you can see that. Feeling great. So now I'm going to sketch on here with this highlighter. So we have up to this point here, this entrance, this road in its entirety, this road is in its entirety. This road is paved, but none of the lots are constructed on it. Where's the Anderson Drive? Anderson Drive is here. Okay, all right. Now I know what gate you're going to. Yeah, so you okay. come in through the gate. So both gates are here. And then we have this detention basin. And this detention basin were constructed. So, um, and the other uh, are fall. Then the other thing that was constructed was actually the utilities come from William Street. We have the water and the electric coming in from this side. And it comes all the way down this road, all the way down to feed all the lots. And the um, electric and water was all installed for all those roads. So the roads were actually cut out. So the, those are gravel roads over there? There were, uh, there were grubs. I know this road is travelable by car. This one is starting to grow up a little bit. Oh, okay. um, but there was some infrastructure installed there as a road. Um, the other component to this project is it was uh, proposed as a golf course. Yeah. And so a lot of the golf holes were actually uh, treed in preparation for that. Um, and then, unfortunately, 2008 came around and everybody kind of stopped doing land development for a little while. And so the site sat there for a little while while they just built up, built up the other 34, the remainder of the 34 homes they could. And it's been sitting there just like that. Are those electric utilities from William Street underground or on poles? Underground. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, so all underground utility, all uh, everything's underground. And it's all uh, considered private. So part of it is that the, all the utilities, all the roads are actually in the maintenance of the storm water is all operated and maintained by the residents of the Hunter's Hill. Uh -huh. um, so on here in this yellow line, I demonstrated where the wetland resource areas were. And when we first uh, arrived in town, we looked at that and we said, okay, well, why don't we refresh our work conditions because it had expired. Um, and get going with the project. But when we started actually looking around out there, uh, we saw that there was considerably considerable change to that. So this plan is the same plan, but it shows where the new uh, resource areas uh, showed up. So there's a valley through here that is a bunch of uh, wetlands, wetlands here and a couple of isolated areas through here. And you can see right, it's right through the middle of some of the roads that were proposed. Um, so you can see that would definitely require some redesign. Um, and the other thing I have, oh, so this is two plans that are overlaid on one another. This is the old design and the new design. So, so this is the 
modification design. And down here in grayscale, this is what's been constructed. Uh, these two basins have been constructed. And this road, because of such a long dead end, was proposed as a boulevard. So it was separated with a, a landscape island in the middle. And it was basically two lanes that went through. Oh, Black Snow Boulevard. It was big, yeah. Calm app? <laughs> like Calm app, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. And um, that was the safety concern. It made sense because on this long dead end, it was, you know, some extra width would be good if there was a uh, tree fell over the road or something of that nature. So what we were able to do is we uh, were able to add a piece of property right here that allowed us to connect these two portions of the property. There's a nice ridge through here. There's no resource areas. So we um, ran the road and extended uh, with Miranda Way built to here. We proposed to extend it all the way up to the loop. And what's not shown on this plan is um, a spot over here, which we haven't fully designed yet, an area that's set aside for another 11 lots. And that would get us to back to the total that's allowed in the special permit of 140 lots. Now, things that uh, stormwater considerations, uh, these two basins would remain, stay right where they were as constructed. Um, this basin, when we were out there, it, I think it was kind of hogged out, it was uh, semi constructed, but it basically became a wetland resource area. So we cannot put that basin there. So we're proposing a few water quality devices there. And then because we lost that basin, we increased this basin in size a little bit. And then to pick up the new road, we designed, a, we pulled this basin outside of the 100 foot buffer zone to this resource area on this side, which I neglected to highlight there. Um, and if you recall, there was a road that came out, which is now in the resource area. So, what's that little rectangle in the upper left hand corner? This, this is the existing septic system right there. Okay. Um, so there's one common septic now. Is that what you're going to do? Another common one or what? Yes. So when you see 10,000 gallons per day or 10,000 gallons per day or more, you need a groundwater discharge permit, which is a higher level permit than was given by the Board of Health. Board of Health will give us up to 9,999. 9, um, that follows under Title V. Mm -hmm. Groundwater discharge permit is a much higher level of expectation. You need to meet um, groundwater discharge standards of nitrogen, uh, total suspended solids, BOD, et cetera. So there'll be a treatment plant on it with an operator. And that will take, that will be constructed immediately adjacent to it. And again, that's the only spot on this entire site that has anything better than desoil. Um, so no one could have their own septic system. Everybody will have their own uh, pump, yeah. and that will discharge into the uh, main line that comes up to a uh, tank, which is then run through a treatment plant and then into the, the groundwater discharge uh, field. Mm -hmm. But each house is going to have their own holding tank with a pump, or is it just a pump, no tank? It will be a pump with uh, some storage in it. Okay. Not a 1,500 gallon tank. No. So initially, we had a plan to have like these down here have a septic tank and a grinder pump. So what's being pumped is just effluent. So technology has kind of come along a little bit since then. And the grinder pumps we have are a little bit better to actually grind what is there and send it into the line. And the treatment, it's actually easier for them to treat if everything's in it, because when there's not enough uh, solids or matter in the wastewater, it makes it more difficult to get things to uh, activate biologically. So they actually recommended that they take all the sewage to the sewage treatment plant and then everything will be taken care of. I'm just curious because I've never been, well, it's private, so I've never been on the site anywhere even to visit anybody. <laughs> What's the topography like? Is, is it up and down, uh, yeah. relatively flat or what? Well, it's Hunter's Hill, right? Well, that's so what I'm asking. <laughs> I picked your Richmond Hill, you know. So it's, um, I don't have the topography on this, but I have five foot contours uh, here. So it's divided up. There's a ridge 
this way, and you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet across this way. So it's a ridge, there's a valley in this direction, and it all comes down to here. Um, and then over here, you can see there's some bedrock outcropping if you visit that area, that's been more hammered out a little bit. And then there's, um, there's a divide again, for the different drainage basins. So we have a wetland system in that direction, a wetland system in this direction, another wetland system in this direction. And it does, it, this is probably the nicest spot where there's a nice ridge. And as you come around this bend, it does drop off. I see a bunch of here. About 15 feet in elevation change around the corner. So it's, it's not flat. It's not like a farmer's field. There's definitely a lot of farm. And then in here where it's wetland is slight valley and pretty much anywhere in the soil type when the soil flattens out, you start seeing wetland resource there. It's that type of uh, soil. <laughs> You've seen that. Um, the only other uh, component that we're uh, proposing, which wasn't in the original design, is this drainage soil. Um, and that's because we had a road and for right here with drainage piping and inlets and things. And that took it into the drainage piping that's been installed and exists. Um, but now without that, what's happening is all this water in this valley comes through here and there's a little swale that comes down to the detention of the Keck Basin and it's definitely overwhelmed. That was not designed to take that amount of water there, um, at least in a design storm situation. So this swale that runs between here will pick that water up and bring it to the piping that's larger and that was actually designed originally for to have all that water. How wide is the road going to be in here? Or how wide are they? 24. And with the sidewalk? Sidewalk on one side. Yeah. Yeah, the road has actually held up remarkably well. They granted a waiver for the uh, depth of the road, the depth of the gravel. Um, and for a road that's, I can't believe it's almost 20 years old now, it's uh, held up, there's no cracking, no alligator or anything like that. Um, you mentioned the type of EMPs that are required here. So um, we do plan on fully meeting the requirements of the stormwater management standards, all 10 of them. Uh, one requirement, I believe it might've been part of the planning board's requirement in their subdivision regs was to have dry basins. Um, originally, this was granted a waiver and this way it was uh, we're asking them to be maintained, um, allowed for constructed wetland basins here. So if you take a look at this basin, it's actually excavated below the water table and it holds water all the time. It acts as a pond. And, uh, That's a detention basin. It is a detention basin, I guess. So in the stormwater standards, that type of basin is known as a wet basin. If you have a large mm -hmm. enough area going to it, uh, the idea is you excavate it. So you have, when you have, uh, you talk about the water quality volume that gets accepted. And usually it's, you know, one times the water quality volume it needs to be stored. So for these, they recommend five to 10 times the water quality volume is held there. Mm -hmm. And they do a superior job when you have enough water getting to them. And they make a nice amenity too. So I talked to some of the people that live here. They like to come down go for a walk around the detention base. Well, if you have a house on it, it's waterfront property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it creates a habitat. We always, every time I come down here, I see animals and turtles and, um, you know, fowl usually land in there. And, the other two, those are retention basins, so they drain. No, they proposed with the same design. So since we had such great feedback on how this looked, we wanted to duplicate that for the rest of the project. Um, so what, what it is, it's basically excavated into a water table for a permanent pool, and then there's a, a berm a dike up above it. So when a design storm comes in, the elevation of the water will rise and then fall back down to the elevation of the pipe on the bottom. So there are outlets for most basins. That's right. All the basins have outlets. Yeah, the soils here are, they just will not support infiltration. So um, in the stormwater regulations, there's a provision that they recognize if you have 
what we call class D and class C soils or soils that have high bedrock, what will happen is if you want to infiltrate, you need to raise the bottom of the basin up above the water table. You have to fill it all with sand and all that type of thing. And it causes a lot more disturbance to the land. So because your pipe starts raising, now your entire site starts raising and everything starts raising. So they asked that we do to the maximum extent practicable. So um, these basins, again, are detention basins. And then we were asked by uh, niche engineering to- well, You're saying detention, they're retention if they're gonna hold water. So a retention basin is a type of basin that infiltrates the water with no outlet. So the water comes in, it rises up, there's no pipe necessarily, and then it infiltrates into the groundwater. Um, that's what they call a retention basin. Down the bottom, didn't we agree those were detention basins? They're detention basins, yes. Right. So the way they hold water is they're excavated below the outlet. Okay. And that's done for water quality. So you have aquatic plants growing there. You have a much greater uh, chance for the water to turn over. So if you have a polluted water with water TSS in it, by the time it makes it across the other side of the pond, it's all dropped out and then it can uh, go. Um, so the water itself will be, I want to call it refreshed because it's going to be below the water table. Yeah, it won't be stagnant water per That's se. That's my point. Right. So when water comes in, yeah. so every drop of water that goes in will come out, but it's being basically recycled, you know, it's turned over. Right. Okay. And there will be some likely base flow, especially in the spring and the winter time, you know, where water will come in and try to exceed it, but it'll be going out the, the pipe. And again, the base flow is it's small. It's not that's going to exceed any of the, the piping. And so um, our initial application niche uh, recommended that we do a little bit better job to uh, the maximum extent practicable. So he asked us to add um, infiltrator, roof infiltrators to each lot. And again, the maximum extent practical, we don't wanna raise up all the lots to have the infiltrators up above the water table. What we usually do is we put them in um, you know, where convenient, enough to hold one inch of storm water off the roof. And then what happens in the summertime when the water table is low and water is needed, then we'll have infiltration. In the winter and springtime, when the water table is up, it won't be able to infiltrate and it'll, it'll run over the ground like grass, uh, which the detention basins have been designed so that uh, it doesn't take into account the water that's lost by the infiltration. So it's kind of a, an extra added benefit. So when it's not infiltrating, it'll be like the normal runoff you get in a rainstorm. That's right. Yeah. So there's, there's a T at the uh, bottom of the uh, roof leader. And it basically, when the pipe can't hold anymore, it will spill onto like no, just like normal. Yeah. But it's not connected to the, the storm drains in the roads. That's right. It would go across the grass vegetated area. And that's allowed too, because roof runoff is considered a clean uh, runoff. But it, it's not going to end up in the street, though. It'll go, it may run. It may end up in the street. It comes off the roof, it will run across the drip grass, and whatever doesn't infiltrate in the grass will end up in the street and then into the basins and then into the pipe. And all the piping has been designed to account for all that. But it runs, when it runs into the street, my point is obviously we don't want icy streets. So the roads will be crowned enough so that water that makes its way out there is going to run off from the sides. Yes. We're not going to have icy roads. No. Because water is sitting there. No, we don't. Uh, so um, we have Crown of the Road, I believe it's 2%. It's modeled after the town um, cross section. So it, and then, uh, there's a Cape Cod burn on both sides. So there is a gutter with berms. And then we have the catch basins. And in my analysis, I didn't just do the piping design, but I also did the grade analysis to show that the water will be running too too wide down the street. Do you have any questions, Mr. Baron? So this this shows the road layout after the major site plan, right? Yeah. 
This is what was submitted. So what, what is that yellow again? The, this is the new resource areas. Okay. And that's another one on this side. Yeah, that's right. I can put that behind it. Yeah, I see, I see that. Um, so that brings me to the case that you're referring to, just to the north of the road. Yeah. So that's not the grass. This is what's happening right now. You've you heard that it's going to grab it, but how's it going to grab it? It's going to go on your road? It's going to be this road. Yeah, this, this road that, yeah. that becomes this road? Yes. Can you tell us on that? So, um, what Tom's referring to is uh, the back to the road. There used to be a road that was designed through here. Mm -hmm. And the high point was at either end of the road, and there was a valley in here. Right. And so all this water came down this way. Got picked up in the piping and then dropped to this point. Without that road, now that water descends this way between these two houses. And in the spring, water just runs through there all the time to that catch basin. So the proposal was to put a swale there and pick that water up and bring it to where it was intended to go. And how would it drain? It's going to be east. You're going to have to do some grading. Yes, yeah, so the swale will have to be. Yep, yeah, so there'll be a cross. Yeah, if you go out there in the winter time, it's actually like a glacier yeah. over there because the water just spreads out like this. So the idea is to create a cross section. Like, you know, swale is a fancy word for a ditch. We have a ditch. Oh, cool. And then we put a pitch on the swale so it always runs. Yeah, so cool. and at the end of the swale, there's a small depression that catch basin inlet. So the water will go into there. So it would not be standing water in the swale. They wouldn't uh, rain. Is it going to be a grassy looking thing that you mow? Yes. Okay. And it's likely there'll probably be a little path that goes across the thing, like two sides and whatnot. Yeah, you know, it'll be nice and cool. Are any of those basins fenced? No, it's not fenced. It's not on the basins. No, not present. Has there been any request or, or planning board or anybody? No, not to my knowledge. Um, and in fact, I think the current residents appreciate that there is no fence because we're able to go down and, and walk around and, and take a look at it and have a picnic. Yeah, the user of the recreation is walking around open space here. Yeah. So I have some other questions about that. So all the outflows is not, it's just going to be so here and not a water body. That's correct. So is in, the whole infrastructure of the stormwater is going to be made homeless association. That's right. And I don't believe it's going to be an average floor reporting more. That would be part of ours. That's right. So nothing goes into the town of guidance for analysis. Right. And I believe we must already know where the, my water is flowing on the Anderson Drive, just to the east of Clubhouse River, uh, just to the west. I believe that's one of the few spots in town that my water flows to the north. Really? Yeah. Yes. It comes up through here, and then I believe it goes under William Street, and that's that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm correct. It's all going to be homes. 100%. Will they have a separate designation? No, because it doesn't go to water body. I didn't know I done Okay, but, but, excuse me. Okay, but we already had this question answered by EP, rel excuse me, EPA relative to the Ag School. We still have to report. Because there's, there's joint eyes that goes to a water body. We're not, we talked about the North Campus. Yes, uh, yes. The so, South technically, the field is not the water body, but it never is getting to the Totten River. My outflow is also right there. So what makes them different? There's no direct connection to a water body. Hydrolog hydrologically speaking, all water goes somewhere. All I'm saying is, since we're requiring the county to give us the data, I would think we would ask the data from us. They've got to do the same maintenance that the town does, unless they have a way of self-cleaning basins and street sweeping. I can address that. So part of the stormwater regulations uh, is a constructive period, stormwater management period, and a long-term stormwater plan. 
and that's uh, included in the report that was submitted, and that's getting reviewed by the review engineer. Um, it includes um, the it directs them, it has a cost estimate of what it takes to clean out all the catch basins, inspection and maintenance of all the stormwater basins, the piping, et cetera. So there is a homeowners association fee, and in that, that gets put into there and those funds will come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My only question will relate to whether or not it has to be reported to the town. So number one, we know it's being done and what the volume is that is removed because what the EPA said to us was in discussing the Aggie school, um, they don't have to have their own designation because you've got a good relationship with them. So as long as they give you the data, include the volume of materials in yeah, the they town. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they need to report them. They would need to do their own MS4 because of the location of that water line. Right. I mean, that's not what's here. All I'm saying is the town of Dighton has responsibility for every stinking basin in the town, as far as knowing where they are and knowing if they're being maintained, okay? Because it's all part of the system. Right now, we're dealing with uh, uh, it for years now, trying to figure out, trying to develop an inventory of basins in this town. And obviously with the developments that have happened over the years, those are the worst ones trying to research. So I'm just asking now, okay? So in that plan, um, I've actually included figures that are eight and a half by 11 that show the locations of every single catch basin, um, every outfall, and every water quality device. That, so they're all right here. That can easily add aerial. Yep. Yep. And then, if you want, I mean, it wouldn't be too much to ask that if they do maintenance, that if they you know, remove anything, or if there's an issue, they could they'll certainly let you know. And these streets are never, ever, 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 ever going to be asked to town to accept. I'm not going to ask them. Because <laughs> we're dealing with that too, but that's just another issue. Yeah. So go ahead. Problem is, the homeowners come and go, and they're eventually going to pass away and move on. So it's not the current people you're dealing right. with, you know? And, and it's not the same town government that's going to be around in years to come. So um, at least the part that we can do while we're doing it, and we're all still here. Physically, uh, the questions have to be answered. That's all. Thank you. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, the mapping shows that you're in an ORW for public water supply. So, this section over here, it comes into the area that was already constructed. So, there is a break somewhere that's about here. Yeah. So, the basins that were already constructed and this roadway and everything that was already constructed had to do with that. What I'm proposing now is where that bridge, I believe, is here. Everything that we're now proposing and modifying is outside of that. This is Somerset of Swanson. Whose who's water comes from that area? I can identify it and see if it pops up. It's the reservoir that's. Uh, yeah. So that divide is, is I think I spoke right, somewhere in here. So the new basins that we're proposing to construct are all outside. So the runoff, some of the runoff that goes into Labor and Bain Brook is part of that area that drains that area. Some of that, some of that was. The Labor and Bain Brook, I believe, is out in this area. To the south, to the south, yeah, he's not going directly into that road. It's just, just to the south, it's private. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's the reservoir. Whoops. No, that's not the reservoir. This is the polygon that encompasses the reservoir. The reservoir is down here. Reservoirs down here. If I shut this, this is an outstanding resource water. Okay. So if I shut that off, which is what I'm trying to do, it includes that. 
this whole area. Okay. So when you are in an outstanding resource water, I think it's standard six uh, in the Massachusetts regulations. What they uh, require is that you treat the water to a higher standard. So we have called the half inch water quality volume, where you know, over in previous areas, that's what generates your water quality volume. Thank you. Um, yeah. If I was saying resource waters, they ask that you do the one inch water quality volume. Uh, so being that we have these wet basins, um, they far exceed, I believe it's like 10 times the, the one inch water quality volume for, for any of that. So we would meet any requirements that are required in the uh, stormwater regs for our sand resource waters. And again, we're not proposing any new outlets on that side. Everything that we have heads um, towards the north there. So there would be this, we have a discharge here, here, and there. Is that recording How does that work? Okay. I think for like, um, if our septic system or something like that was in there, there's uh, provisions in Title V that require that. I don't believe uh, the existing stormwater discharge would require that. Did you have a question? Do I have a question? No. Uh, just lost something. Um, oh, you had said you were going to dig more test holes. Yes. So uh, we can do our dig more test holes in this basin and in this basin. So, do you? Are you looking for approval from the stormwater or anyone for that? Um, I was going to ask Todd if he was here, but uh, he's driving around right now. So I won't ask him while he's driving, but um, maybe after this meeting, we'll come uh, to the Port Health office and uh, get, get on their uh, schedule. It wouldn't be hey. you. Oh, go ahead, Todd. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually parked at the moment. So, um, because the public hearing is not open, we're going to have to redo this last 40 minutes when we reopen the public meeting um, and ask all the same questions and do it all over again. So I kind of want to refrain from getting into the weeds too much here. I think the only two things this board needs to consider at this point in time is, do we want to do a site walk, which we can do because there's no discussion at it, and uh, schedule the date for the public hearing so that we can notify the abutters and get it in the newspaper. Yes, I can do test pits with them at any time. Obviously, I was hoping to do it today, but obviously I had to leave. Um, but yeah, we can work it out with my calendar and figure out available dates. Um, I'm looking at about a month out right now. And um, by then we'll have a pretty good idea of where you need to dig and how many holes you got to dig and all that, because I'll be able to get into the plans by then. So that's all. So um, I don't need to cut you off, but going to wrap this up. No, I appreciate you that. Go to the public That's hearing. right. So my question yeah. is, when you had a hearing, is conservation having a hearing or are they all yes. set? You've got one prior. All right. So we need to set a date for the, the uh, site visit um, for the stormwater committee. And before I forget, can I ask one yes, more question? Yes, go ahead. Um, the other thing that I'd like to get out tonight is the understanding about review engineering. If the two review engineers that we have I can be relied on for our analysis because they already are looking at the stormwater, how we comply with uh, stormwater standards, et cetera. Um, obviously, Todd's going to look at it as well. Um, we pretty much rely on what Todd says because he's going to look to see what the other engineers have done. So if he has questions or concerns, they've got to be addressed. Yeah, but we don't necessarily need our own 53G engineer to review the same thing these other two are doing. All right, so we're looking at a date. Stormwater's, excuse me, CONCOM is having a hearing tomorrow night. So um, the next, the August Stormwater Committee meeting is the 17th. We can have a hearing that day, as long as we get the site visit in before. It's the 17th of August, which is our regular meeting date. Is that? Um, 
Would you want to do a site visit on that day? No? I love you all, but that'll be a full day with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, to, to, to lose, I don't want to say lose, but to use a whole day uh, it takes a big chunk out of the week. And there will be other boards. Uh, Concom will be the next day after that. Anyhow, so. Oh. Todd has a perk the morning of the 15th, which would be that Monday. And he's got a one o'clock regional um, meeting in Norton, the coalition meeting on Tuesday. So we could do the Tuesday morning if that works for you guys. Would it be possible to do it a little bit earlier in case you guys had any comments? I could have so, updated on the um, plan. Before that, were you talking about the 16th, Ross? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but Evan's looking for like the week before. Or... Yeah, the 16th isn't going to work for me because that's a statewide um, stormwater meeting. Oh, yeah, we get a report coming up, so I want to go to that. It's a Zoom meeting. <laughs> what does Tuesday the second look like? Todd's going to park at eight. Um, Wednesday. They hold it. All right, he's got an 11:30 um, design for 1050 William Street, but we could do early, like 8:30 or 9, hopefully before the heat again. Does that work for you guys? It was. We could do eight. Is eight too early? No. So we're talking the August third to Wednesday. Yeah. So we're talking eight a.m. Okay. Where? How do we get into this place? I'll let you know. We need to move you to down by Sandwich. That makes sense. Which is the one on the other side. And is that Anderson Drive? That's the only way I know how to get there. Yeah, I'll meet you at the gatehouse on Anderson Drive. And then we go to the side. I think Sandwich makes sense where it's the, uh, yeah. It's a paved road that has right. no houses on it. So right. that'd be a good place to park. Yeah. That's, that's right. what I thought. Uh, okay, do you have anything else that you absolutely have to tell us today because we're <laughs> over an hour into this meeting and I've got a full agenda here, so. No, just uh, again, appreciate you guys spending time with me. Okay, all right. So, uh, so we do need to schedule the public hearing. I'm not sure of the timeline from when the application was submitted. No zoning board, we had 21 days. I'm not sure what's still water. Do you know what I'm It's within, it's within 21 days. But we, we would sign a waiver if you want. We can An extension? Sign yeah, we could sign an affidavit extension. So do you want to hold the public hearing at our next meeting? Is that what we're considering? I, I would think it's the best way to do it, like we've done with a couple of others at 1.30. And we can present it be <laughs> so, <laughs> it would be, um, August 17th, 1 p.m. is the meeting, and 1 30 will be the public hearing. Okay. So, Evan, I will draft the um, legal notice for the paper. Mm -hmm. and, um, what they'll do is they will just give an invoice here or late. Um, I'll need the, um, well, you're going to notify the abutters, and when you come to that meeting, we'll need the green cards, and I just need a copy of your abutters list before it goes out. We need the list is in the application. Oh, okay. And then, um, is there an actual notification form that you want to give me? Yep. Okay. So yep. I'm going to email that to you. Okay. Yep. Are any abutters to Hunters Hill not located in Hunters Hill? 
Yes. Anderson Drive and yes. Mills Lane and yes. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, is way. that right? Oh, it's about eight hundred dollars. Uh, we all set on this one here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 3B. Uh, review discuss Act Wellington Acres. Um, Want to give a quick report on that one, Jim? Yeah. Sure. So we did a site walk at Wellington Acres yesterday. It went very well, I thought. And uh, it was the first opportunity I had to use our um, stormwater infrastructure maintenance form, which I thought worked very well. Um, I will redraft that so that I get it to Ra so we can start a file. But it was found that there were a few deficiencies that need to be addressed. So the purpose of the meeting was to look at the stormwater infrastructure and give a report back to the HOA. Excuse me. You're gonna have to listen to this because Jim just gave a report. Oh, my right. apologies. So go ahead, Jim. So we visited Wellington Acres yesterday for a, a site visit, and I did use the stormwater infrastructure maintenance form. It worked well. The purpose of the meeting was to report to the HOA if the stormwater infrastructure was in working order and whether or not there were any deficiencies. Uh, Todd, Lisa, and I created the elements, walked the site, and found that there were some problems with stormwater infrastructure. Um, fairly minor, some fencing issues. There was some piping that needed to be uh, reconnected. But overall, it was in pretty decent shape. Uh, we did identify that there's a gate for access to Basin 1. And um, that that gate had been oriented in such a way that would not allow access with machinery. So we're gonna send a letter to the planning board asking that gate to be relocated or add an additional gate so that we can access basin one from the roadway. Overall, it was a good meeting. So I got an email from Mr. Killing today with um, items that he wants me to draft a letter to the developer. Um, the letter to the planning board, I thought I was writing to the planning board. He said, I'm writing to the developer. I think it should go to the planning board. All right, I'll check with him before yeah. I do it. Or, or maybe planning board with a CC to the developer. All right. All right, I'll check that out. Anything else? Yes, on? I'm still here. Does that make sense, Doc? Planning board with a CC to the developer on the letter for Wellington? Yeah, well, like say the things I'm asking for are relative to the septic system. So that's why uh, I guess we can do it through the planning board. I, it doesn't matter to me as long as I can see the documents. I don't have it with me, it's on my computer. Oh, okay. Bob, what do you, do you have any? Can you stop? Hold over. Do you have any? You're going to have to speak up a little bit. Do you have some bullet items in your letter handy? Did you include the stormwater issues? Oh, yeah. Um, no, can I didn't do the storm. Can I get into it in your emails? Yes, you can. It was in the sent email to Nancy. I sent it last night, I think, at like four o'clock. So yeah, Jim, the only other thing I want to mention is, I, I don't know if it made it into your list of the planning board or not. When I was in the drainage basin and you and Lisa were outside and I was looking through the pipe at you, the trash rack and the flow control plate have both been removed from the outlet structure. Um, they were all welded on or whatever. I don't know how they get ripped off, but they are not on and they need to be reattached. So, 
So Todd, your um, email to Nancy, it says, here's what I have so far. It's only the additional docs. Jim and I will have to work out the yep. punch list. This is what, okay. So we've got homeowners association declaration of trust, operation and maintenance plan, a description of the final assurance mechanism proposed to ensure effective long-term operation and maintenance of the system a grant of Title V covenant and easement, and any covenants, deed restrictions, or other homeowners agreements that ensure proper maintenance and pumping of 27 septic tanks. So, uh, That's mostly documentation. That he's looking for, so yes. So would that go to the planning board? Uh, are there two letters? Should there be two letters? My I question is. Send this to the developer and we could copy the planning board on it. And then you and Todd will come up with a letter to the planning board on actions that need to be taken relative to this system and the stormwater and all that. And it will be to the planning board with a copy to the developer. All right, okay. so there'll be two letters. All right, we'll work on that. We'll have a, we'll get together. Okay. Yep, because and just you know, all these septic information, this stuff never would have gone to the planning board. It would have been through the Board of Health, but I can't find any of the documents. So it doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means that I can't find them. And if it outlines what the Homeowners Association needs to do for the next million years, we need to make sure that they know what they have to do and that document needs to exist. Okay, we all set on that one. Three C, update on Stonegate Landing Development. Um, I went to the last zoning board meeting and advised them that uh, the May, February and May taxes had not been paid. Um, there was no request to continue. Uh, Mrs. Easterday and Mr. Logan read emails they had gotten from various parties connected to this. There was no formal request to continue. Uh, they discussed ending it right then and there and denying the whole thing, but then there was more discussion and they ended up continuing it to August without the request to continue. Um, I have since received an email from the attorney representing Mr. Federoff and uh, the realty company interested in acquiring it, telling me the taxes were paid. Um, well, as of the zoning board meeting, the, the money had not come into the town. So I don't know uh, if money was paid. I know if you put money in the mail on that envelope, it goes to like a, an agency that does all the receipts and deposits it. All I know is as of that day, it had not been received in town hall, either actual uh, money or uh, a report from the company that collects taxes. So I'm looking into that, but at this point in time, um, there's nothing for us to do. They haven't asked to come before us that I'm aware of. Um, the, and zoning board won't even uh, talk about it until we get the tax issue resolved. And I have a list of uh, uh, properties that Mrs. Schechter put together from the assessor's office with a whole bunch of properties listed with taxes due. So uh, we'll just put this on the agenda for the next meeting. And if we have something, we'll discuss it. If not, uh, not. Uh, agenda item 3E, update on 520 Marion Avenue. Um, going back at, to the last meeting, I got to draft the letter to the uh, Board of Selectmen requesting that town council get involved with this because there has been no response. You haven't got anything to add yet? Okay, so that stands. Um, 3F, uh, 2371 County. Did we hear anything from DEP yet on this one? No. Okay, so just continue that one. Um, as a matter of fact, both uh, C and, excuse me, E and F could be on next month's agenda. And if okay. we have anything, fine. If not, we just go over it. Um, uh, the memo that came out from the uh, town administrator, capital needs. Does anyone know of capital needs equipment or anything that's needed by the stormwater committee? I'm not aware of any anything. The capital needs everything is over 
Yeah, is there anything in the stormwater budget that we should get that should be attributed to stormwater from your end? I mean, because if there were any equipment, it would be from your department, or, you know, the equipment would be uh, used by people in your department. I know this time. Okay. And, and just, just so you know, it, it's helpful to do it this time, the budget season, but they have an application that is live and available year round when the needs arise. So that. Okay, so I'll uh, send a, a note, a uh, memo to Mr. Mullen said nothing at this time. The only thing you foresee when we get this catalog in the control, we identify what we actually are supposed to be doing on the town side of the maintenance. We could identify it by a certain type of equipment. Okay. But I, I mean, just to buy a, something to most stuff is not appropriate. Uh, agenda item 4A update clearway solar project 1420 1522 William Street. Where are we with that? They were moving ahead with uh, the last thing I saw was the email from was it Mr. Schlickman uh, wanting to extend the work hours to 7 p.m. with maybe shorter hours on Friday because they're trying to make up time uh, to, I guess, cut the road and clear the land and whatever else. Um, I haven't uh, he responded he would take care of making sure that they didn't arrive before the scheduled work hours or be there after seven and uh, tell the guys when they leave work and when they arrive, remember they're in a residential area so it's not noisy. Uh, knock on wood, so far I haven't heard anything, so I think it's moving along. They took care of everything that you had from a conservation yeah, I actually just got the weekly inspection. Um, I don't know if you, you guys must get a copy of it, correct? But, um, I haven't seen it, but if you just quickly summarize it, yeah. I think it was supposed to go to you anyhow. Yeah, so the site is, as far as the grassing, they hydroceded and they continue to water. Um, they had one area that they went outside that limited disturbance, but they added the erosion control. Uh, the only thing that should be left open is that vernal pool, and I imagine it's going to dry up pretty soon. It hasn't dried up already. Probably not. Yeah, I haven't been out there, but I've been reading the report. And um, they said that they would clean yeah. it out when it dried out. So my one question is, um, are we required? Sorry, is stormwater committee requiring them to submit stormwater inspection reports after a quarter inch of rain? Because we did get a quarter inch of rain like last week. We haven't asked for that. At my house. Under the SWIP, I think we'll be required. But Todd, do you know? Um, I forget what the water amount was. I thought it was a half an inch of rain. Well, if it's if it's if we've got enough rain, just get in touch with them and tell them we need it. Uh, I will tell you, we had a thunderstorm one afternoon that lasted 30 minutes, and I get two rain gauges. The front yard measured 1.3, and the back yard measured 1.4. I couldn't believe it. Do you know right? that one? Um, I'll have to look back. It was a Thursday. I'm, yeah, you're right. It's a Thursday because it came up suddenly. And it was thunder and lightning, not horrendous, but loud. And the rain came down so hard that oh, yeah. it missed all the gutters. And I had sheets of rain. Uh, it was blowing. I had plants blow over. I had a lot of small little limbs and stuff. Um, but the next day, and then the sun came out. And the next day when I checked the gauges, um, that's how much water there was because they all ended up in the backyard because of the slope of the land, but right. the lawn's still dry. But uh, anyhow, I can, I can request that. Is it K? I'll ask K. So you're going to request what? Uh, ask them for a copy of their inspect their swift inspection report from that date. And it may be they didn't get a drop of rain down there. She was going to put up a rain 
because I, I can tell you that's the most rain I've seen up in my area of town in a long time. I even sent a note to Mr. Berry to tell him. It was, it was very nice of me. There were lots of time. I didn't see them. Uh, I have a question for uh, Todd, if you're still on, and Lisa. So the last time I visited that site was about 10 days ago, and they were waiting for logging equipment to show up the day that I was there, which means that logging equipment should be have been there for an inaccessible week. Um, although I understand it takes time, if they're working extended hours, um, we need to be reminded that once they clear the site, they're supposed to rough grade in the stormwater infrastructure. So we might want to put it on our list to get up there and take a look to make sure that's being done. Yeah. yeah, and at the same time, while they were popping the stumps and doing the rough grading is when we have to do our test pits to confirm water table in all the drainage basins. They, they have not contacted me to uh, schedule a date for digging holes. I'd like to see him after the meeting's over, just so we can keep moving. Um, 4B, Brook Street Solar Project, Grasshopper. So um, you all saw copies of uh, the second to last, or maybe the third to last email I sent to uh, um, Mr. Hafez uh, advising him that the stormwater committee declined another site visit because it was considered non-productive, insulting, so forth and so on. Um, he did call me uh, after our last meeting and wanted to know what happened. And I told him that he would be getting an email from me, which he got later on that night or really the next morning, um, that the uh, Sean Water Committee declined the site visit. It's, you know, counterproductive, uh, that this whole thing has just gone on and on and on, and that um, uh, it was insulting. And um, when I talked to him on the phone, I reiterated again, you've got the solution there. Dig it up and build them correctly, period. Um, it, it made no sense at all to keep going over this whole thing again and having something designed with pipes sticking out of it and everything else. And um, the final second to last email I got from him, after I announced at the Board of Selectmen's meeting last week, everything was going fine and I thought we had a solution. Uh, then I got that other proposal and it's like, forget it. So the last email I got from him was the one that said, uh, he finally got the message, we're gonna make you go back to the planning board. We're gonna make you, you're probably gonna to have to have a public hearing and go through the whole thing again, because this is a major change. I got the email that said they agreed they are going to reconstruct the basins based on the original approved plans and that Mr. Fassendola would be in touch with Todd and Jim. And I at the time told him Mr. Pilling was on vacation, but if he wanted to contact Mr. Aggie, I, he could certainly talk to him. So have you heard anything from Mr. Fassendola? No. So all I know is, the last thing was they're going to follow the rules and regs and the plans. Um, how that gets done is beyond me. Um, I will also tell you that I did send an email because of uh, a call we received about noise before seven in the morning. And I asked him to please look into it. Um, and uh, he did get back to me and say, the party making the noise or the, whoever was out there was not the contractor or not somebody directly employed by Grasshopper. This person was the what I want to, landscape contractor who was out there checking, I guess, to see if the 
plants or the grass or the whatever was growing. Is there grass under the panel? Does anybody know? Uh, there's not grass, it's not well established. No. Uh, well, with this drought too, you know. But anyhow, um, he told me it was not uh, somebody who would have been around the last time when we told them. And they said, if anyone did it again, they'd be fired. So I don't know if we can buy this person or not, but I said, thank you. Please make sure that this person and anybody else knows they are not to be on site before 7 a.m. Uh, and that was the last I heard. So has there been any more noise up there? Okay. Uh, if it happens, pick up the phone. Don't wait for business hours. Whenever it is, pick up the phone. Call me. I mean. I don't have a problem, all right? It's six o'clock, I mean, we have one. Oh, not a problem. <laughs> you, can, you can actually call the police department. I told my husband to do that, he didn't want to call. He just called the police department, he knows for me. Exactly. Well, it's a bother for everyone, right? Well, yeah, I know. If, if I know. the police tell them that they shouldn't be doing that, then they will stop. So if you, if you call me, I will call the police. I did go by the site later in the day, but obviously later in the day. We saw it, and it was still here. I can they, see a white pickup truck that in there. Okay. The other ones that have whatever machine that was, and um, they left like ten minutes after. Okay. Yeah, I, I swung by there. Um, I will not go on that site alone. I'll tell you that. Um, I wouldn't go on it unless I had a uh, either a policeman with me, or at least somebody from the committee. Um, because in the past I've had to deal with some pretty rude characters and when a woman shows up alone, all right, we know what that's like. So anyhow, uh, if it happens again, don't hesitate to call, all right? Uh, so that's the update on uh, Brook Street. Um, I'm hoping you're gonna call me up and tell me, or tell any of us, hey, they're digging up out there because that's what they're supposed to do. I don't know if what they dug out of there was sufficient to now start filling it. Um, no, there's more digging that has to be done. Mr. Pilling, do you have any comments on this? Not at this time. Okay. Yes. No, I would think it will fall or something. They were I mean, required to do that. Well, I remember yeah. discussions because Mr. when we were out there on a site visit, uh, Mr. Ferry had said, I said, hey, that tree doesn't look too good or whatever. And he said, whatever dies off will be replaced. Right. And that, those are the big plants that they put. But there's a, um, what do they call it? Forest enhancement that's supposed to be planted within that 50 foot uh, range. It's on, it's on the plants. And then they, have, they submitted a minor modification for those 10 plants. And I understand that they can't go in yet because they got to live in the basin, but 10 plants along the north side of the basin mm -hmm. on the top of the basin. Mm -hmm. I would think any planning is going to wait now till it. Well, I assume it will fall, but right. I just wanted to, nobody's talked about it. So. And, and obviously the drought. All right, thank you. It's probably a good thing that rain that hit my house didn't hit down there because those basins would have been worse than worse. Um, agenda item 4C, update, Main Street water main replacement. Anything happening there, Mr. Perry? Have they bid that contract out? I don't know those details. Okay. We're still in the water now. Okay, so we'll just keep it on the, well, the, the usual plays will remain on the agenda. Uh, Winthrop Street Catch Basin. Um, you were on vacation, I think, when this one came up. So, do we need to send a letter to uh, the Title Five lady? Excuse me, not Title Five, District Five person. No, no, I was here last week. Well, the meeting that you weren't here is when this came up. So, have you heard anything from them? Yes. Oh, you have. Yes. So, I spoke with. The meeting is about last week, so I'm supposed to get back and get back from yesterday. Um, they understood the history. They reminded me there was a 
Okay, just playing. Before there was a potential list discharge here. It's, that basically is history with the neighborhood. But I explained what's happening now with the ice and whatnot. So they're taking note, they're going to look into it a little further. They will try to rectify anything that needs to be done before winter. Oh, good. I, they understand what I was trying to tell them about the ledge in the back and the ground can't take the water. Is yes. there a lot of ledge in that area too? It's basically all ledge behind the house and so on. And what, all the water seems to come between them two structures and they head for that piece. That's why we're experiencing that. And is that all ledge that goes up? Chestnut Street. That's and on your left, you can take it going up. That's what's pushing the water between the structures. Agenda item 4E, DG Dighton Solar Projects. This is one and two Elm Street. Uh, Mr. Pilling, do you have anything on that one? Okay. Oh, Mr. Agya, go ahead. I actually have in my hands the final revised as built. After uh, Agent Pilling and I's comments were received by the developers. And at today's permitting meeting, um, I have decided to implement a sign off process for uh, the issuance of a certificate of completion, which will close out the project in its entirety. We have not done that in the past, but I think it's time that we do, especially with uh, these projects becoming more and more complex. So it was well received. And uh, this will be the first project that we go through that process with. Uh, I would think that at the next meeting, I will tell you that we have actually closed out the project and it is now 100% complete. And one and two are both online? Yes. Uh, Mr. Pilling, do you have anything to add? Or are we all set on DG Dayton one and two? I have nothing to add. Thank you. Firefield development. Um, anything you want on this one, other than uh, I'm going to go to the right time. I think they were rescheduled. I think they're maybe the first week of August. They had a problem with the excavator broke down. So Joshua called and rescheduled. Okay. Yeah, I, I forget what the two dates we have, but it is a little later in August now. Um, what date did we just pick for the next PAC meeting or something? It was that same day, I think. I don't know. Very scheduled for um, the 9th and 10th. Did you do two sets of dates or just one? Just one set of dates, two days back to back. Okay, it's Tuesday the 9th and Wednesday the 10th. Oh, I can find out when the Todd and Con comes meeting because that could be after that. And your last instruction was get this straightened out in Dighton before you come back here. To me, they'd be going for another continuance. Whatever. I'll find out when that is. Um, I didn't go to the one in uh, July um, because it got continued to August, but whatever. Um, agenda item 4G, ZBA meeting, July 13th. So I already gave you a little bit of that uh, when I was talking about this Golden Gate Landing situation. Um, the, as I said, the taxes weren't paid. The ZBA did give them an extension. Uh, they continued the hearing until August. Um, uh, the attorney, when she said the taxes have been paid and they applied for the uh, continuance, well, as of that meeting, nobody had gotten it. So it got continued. Um, and the ZBA said, if uh, this problem continues with unpaid taxes, they're saying August is when they're going to make a decision um, on what to do with it. Um, because there were some that felt we should just end this tonight. We'll deny it without prejudice and they can come back again. So um, other than that, um, CBA asked about the uh, um, billing, uh, the registration that you have 
with the Secretary of State. Uh, they're not registered. Um, and there was also something missing. Uh, the attorney said, our attorney, Marguerite Mitchell said, their application wasn't complete anyhow because they didn't have the sign off for taxes from the tax collector. Well, we know why they didn't have that. Uh, so that's where we are with that one. Um, we'll let you know after the next meeting, uh, whatever happens. And in the meantime, uh, we'll, the assessor's office and the tax collector are trying to figure out these other tax amounts and also whether or not February uh, they were paid. And of course, the 1st of August is coming up. So, any public input? Um, we did receive, I guess I'm talking about the correspondence, sorry. Okay, correspondence. We received an email from Chris Knight regarding 903 Tremont Street, 624 Middle. Did you get this one, Jim? No, I didn't see you on that email, but I wasn't sure if you sent it to you. I'm not angry on all the emails. He said, as requested, I wanted to provide a monthly progress update on the projects at 903 Tremont Street and 624 Middle Street. It sounds like our update email from June 15th may not have been shared during the previous meeting. So if that's the case, I'll include those items in this. But I think you gave us an update, didn't you, at the last meeting? Okay. Um, a purchase order with new manufacturer has been signed for the solar panels after a different manufacturer defaulted on the previous purchase order due to the tariff situation. A phase one environmental site assessment was completed by Conseco engineers for the project site. On a request, we recently received a decommissioning agreement from Mrs. Easter Day in the planning office. We are now working to complete the necessary special permit conditions ahead of submitting our building permit. As of yesterday, Mrs. Schechter, the assessor, confirmed that she has received the necessary payments related to the 61A removal for both properties and will be recording the partial lien releases with the Registry of Deeds. Mr. Rich Riccio of Field Engineering and I attended the June 15th planning board meeting to discuss the open items regarding the project's battery and storage component. Based on discussions with the planning commissioner, James Baggia, we understand that the battery energy storage component of our project must comply with the town standard operating procedure for battery energy storage system permitting. Due to the lengthy lead times involved with the battery energy storage system, an agreement has been executed with STEM Energy, S-T-E-M Energy, to provide the battery storage equipment and such equipment has been ordered. The EPC contractor to construct the project has been identified. Negotiations to formalize the agreement with the contractor will begin shortly. Once the EPC contractor is on board, they will be responsible for assembling the building permit package to be submitted to the building commissioner. Any questions, comments, anything? Okay, so for the next uh, agenda, put them down actually as an agenda item and okay. also a monthly report uh, of update or however we want to do it. Under active project updates or committee business? Uh, active project updates, that would be good. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes. Did everybody get the minutes of May 18th? They were the last ones I sent out Saturday night. I didn't have any feedback from anybody, so I assume they were okay. Um, so I will accept a motion to approve the special meeting minutes of May 9th and July 6th. 2022. Oh. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Mr. Killing? Aye. <laughs> Aye. Regular 
Second. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> I think this is over. It's time to hear. <laughs> I hear you not all in favor. Hi. Hi. And the last one is to approve the meeting notes of the site visit of June 15th. Motion. So moved. So moved. We got a motion. <laughs> is there a second? <laughs> Mr. Pilling could be the second. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> He's driving down the road laughing and he's going all over the road and people are looking at him saying, what's wrong there? Uh, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, anything else? Hearing none, motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can somebody stop the recording? Go ahead, I'm listening. Can you hear me? Yep. Down on the bottom, kind of over on the right, there's three horizontal dots. If you pick that, it'll say stop recording to the cloud. Um, I have two questions too, so uh, I was, you know, I was thinking, how do I tell them? You want to come back again? Uh, so on the bottom, you've got like a uh, mute video oh, participants. Now I got it. More, more, and then. Yep, more. Maybe it was more. Yep. Just stop recording.